Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. Let me know what the audio is like. Um, I need to know if you can hear me. Of course, we are talking blood war. Blood war. So thank you for joining us for this very first show where uh, things are about to get toasty. Okay, so if you did not watch my uh, pre-show special that I did uh, two weeks ago, fear not, I will catch you up. We're going to be looking at all kinds of things today um, in terms of the pre-game. This does contain spoilers, so if you are here for the Descent into Avernus Blood War actual play, that begins on the hour. And you should not listen to this if you don't know or don't want to know what's going to be coming up in today's show. We've got a lot to get through today. This is the first one that uh, we are doing. So, um, yes, things are, are um, about to launch. So, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting space that we find ourselves in. The first episode, the first session that you're going to be playing is going to set the standard by which all other sessions run. So you have to make sure that you're setting the right tone and the right mood. So it's, it's in this vein, in this spirit that we have to realize, okay, so we need to, to, to look at that. Now, I'm going to be talking a lot about things uh, in terms of a fantasy grounds that will be helping me today. Less so much on the story side of things because I have covered that in the previous show. You can find that on the D&D YouTube channel. Um, if you head on over to YouTube and into the official D&D channel, you will find that they've listed it there actually as episode one of uh, Descent into Avernus, the Blood War. Uh, as uh, our wonderful moderators, um, TK has joined the fray has dropped into chat if you have questions now's the time to ask them and do just preface your question with the word question in front of it nice big and bold for me let's jump right into this some of the things that are important for us to remember let me take you through the plan let me open that up here quickly so when we go through to the plan you can see there that we've got um, a rather interesting uh, set of plans coming up let me just make sure this is not being cropped off of your screen uh so actually it, it oops wrong way don't do that um let me just go to here quickly sorry i see that uh, i uh, cropped this off for some unknown reason so let me just open that up for you okay there we go so that will allow you to see everything uh, hopefully not too much of everything but it gives you an idea of where we're going let's get rid of this side here and fits everything else i swear right so getting stuff uh, section number one the very first thing that we're going to be looking at is getting stuff joining forces with zariel now if you don't know why some of these have got g's and some of them have got numbers joining forces with G zariel g g means that this is my adventure it's not part of the descent into avernus book by now if you are going to get descent into avernus you probably have already picked up your copy uh so you're starting to go through that we are looking at the period that leads up to Descent into Avernus. So the book that you've got, the adventures that you have got, those would follow on from what's hopefully going to be happening in the show, in the adventures that the guys are running through. They're doing the preamble. Now that preamble, if you didn't know, and this is the biggest spoiler, so watch out for this one. I'm giving you a few seconds to just pull your headphones off. This is the biggest spoiler. Although it's not a huge spoiler because we've known it since the 80s. Anyway... Zariel is an angel, a divine being, who decides that she is going to go into Avernus with an army and try and take on the demon and devil hordes and conquer them both. Her intentions are pure, but the angelic host and the gods do not sanction her actions. So she goes off and she does it anyway, and at the end of it, she becomes the new archdemon, uh, archdevil of Avernus. She eventually succumbs to the, the the entire space of Avernus and she becomes the archdevil in charge of Avernus, which is where Descent into Avernus, uh, the book that you guys have now picked up, uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, that's where the book picks up from, is that she has fallen, she has become the archdevil and she is now in charge of Avernus. So that is something to bear in mind. Our story is why and how did she fall? It's an interesting story from my perspective, and one of my biggest challenges was someone actually raised it as a question in the in the uh, pregame. Was they were saying how implausible they felt 
that the entire situation with Zariel was. This raising of an army and invading Avernus. It didn't feel genuine. It didn't feel right. And I looked at that statement. I looked at that question. And I went, I, I agree. We need to find out how to make it work. So this is my attempt to make it work. And I think that that's going to be a very strong driver. Our, our theme is hubris. So we're going to be looking at that. So join forces with Zariel is my introductory video, uh, um, video, my introductory adventure, which we will be going through tonight. And the entire goal is to get the player characters from where they currently are to Avenus and to get them embroiled in Avernus as well. There are a lot of options that you have within the book. You know, there's lots of ways in which characters can get from the Prime Material Plane into Avernus. There are, <clears throat> well, there's too many to list, basically. I wanted to make sure, though, that my player characters were going to get hooked straight away into the main body of it, which is where they're joining forces with Zariel. And that, for me, is key. So this first part is definitely going to be very railroady. It starts railroady. But as I have said to my players, I have forewarned them. I said, listen, the beginning is cinematic. And by cinematic, I mean just go with it. Don't try too much. Because, again, players have got agency, and they need to have agency. However, sometimes you need to move things along a little bit. And especially in this case, we only have 12 episodes, and I've got a lot to get through in terms of 12 episodes. So today's episode is all about joining forces with Zariel. When we get to the siege of Brakrul Dach, which will probably start in today's show as well. I've been looking at it. Uh, Dungeon Fog did the maps for me, and the map that they did of the cathedral is just absolutely beautiful. Now, something else that's important to bear in mind, at least I think so, is that... Avernus is a very difficult space. It really is a difficult space. There's lots of stuff going on. And sometimes it's a bit daunting to keep track of. So Fantasy Grounds is one of our other sponsors. So we've got Dungeon Fog, we've got Fantasy Grounds. Now Fantasy Grounds has got some wonderful options in it, which I want to show you because it's going to help. And I think that if you are running this game, there is an advantage. You know, a lot of times people say, well, it's, what's online going to offer me, etc., etc." Well, this is what they're offering from, from this perspective. And I, I particularly like that. So they've got this thing called Story. And if you've bought the Avernus book within Fantasy Grounds, you can load it up. And what I particularly like is that Avenus has got a lot of different things, like optional rules. So I've got these open. For example, there's exhaustion. Avenus's combination of oppressive heat and supernatural malevolence weighs on the bodies of those that are there. A non-evil creature treats normal travel through Avenus as a forced march and must make constitution saving throw at the end of each hour, which I'm changing. Uh, the DC is 10 plus 1 for each hour of travel. So... I'm changing that. It's not per hour because travel in Avernus could be very difficult. It could be very slow, and I don't like that. I want it to be. Um, I, I want the characters to be able to journey and not have to panic. So I'm going to make it per journey or per per day anyway. And it's difficult. There isn't there isn't days. Anyway, so there's lots of things. There's pervasive evil. Um, there is rest. There's food. Anyway, all of this is now recorded here for me, so I can kind of flip through it. I can manage, I can skip through these kinds of things and um, keep keep track of things. There's my encounters table. I'm actually going to close that because I don't need it just yet. What is now? What are we now going to turn our attention to? So this is how, if you wonder, how on earth does he remember all of these tables? How does he How does he do this? How does he do that? Um, it's 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 using the software it, it really is using the software so there's a map there we're going to talk about this map in a little bit um let me see there are some questions that have come through question from white tiger 225 how do you deal with the players if they just don't want to go along with zariel yes so i can i can railroad only so far and then it's entirely up to the players so if the players choose <clears throat> actually we want to go off on our own route that's absolutely fine, and they're more than welcome to do so. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be presenting them with some options the moment that they arrive in Avernus. They're going to get a taste for what could happen, and they're going to get some options. Now, again, I don't believe in, in controlling what the players decide to do. So I will say to them, 
This is option A. Uh, stay in Avernus, work with Zariel, and possibly get out. Option B is, well, don't work with Zariel. Knock yourselves out. Good luck getting out of hell. Good luck getting out of Avernus. So uh, they can. And there are many, many routes that they might take to do so. It will just be difficult. They will still go through the adventures that I've planned, but they'll come through them by accident or by encounter rather than um, by design. So the one route is definitely a more militaristic route where they are a band of individuals who are working for Zeriel and uh, they, they will have a specific name. They um, have all created characters which have got some interesting pasts. All of them have got a dark past. Um, so they will they will have a, a group name and then they will be assigned assignments to go off and do, which is basically how we'll get them through the encounters. If they avoid that, that's not a problem. But the adventure that's been sort of established and set up will simply continue to run. Uh, BNAA UK says, when was Zariel first introduced? I don't remember her. That is a Dungeons and Dragons lore question, which I'm not entirely convinced I even know the answer to. I do know that Zariel has been around for a while um, because there are older drawings of her. So that must be at least 3.5. Could have been mentioned, perhaps. Um, I'm, not to I'm not entirely sure. If anybody does know, it would be great for you to... Um, there we go. Uh, I see there's an answer there. 1999. So not 3.5. Oh, no, definitely 3.5. Uh, second edition book. Uh, right. OK, so they've definitely been around for, for, for quite some time. So there we go. Thank you, um, Von Corellon. Von Corellon for answering that one. Um, very quickly, we've got something else from Zoe ML. Do you have more time per session this season or is it the same time limit? It is still the same time limit. So we're still sticking to the two hours. And, um, you know, on reflection, three hours is great. It really is great. Uh, it's, is it better than two hours? I'm not sure. The, the, the thinking behind two hours is definitely something that I'm very aware of. And with this bunch of players, I know that most social encounters will take an hour to go through, maybe a little bit less if they're lucky, but generally speaking, it'll take an hour for them to go through because they're going to be doing multiple ones. This party is not afraid to split up, and I'm a GM who doesn't mind if my party splits up. So, <clears throat> yes, it takes, it takes an hour for social, and then combat is fairly quick. So combat... You're going to see something about combat in a little bit. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing differently from the book simply because I feel that the the opportunity is there and we should capitalize upon it. So the entire principle around Avernus is that it is the demons versus the devils. Something that I have always felt about the Monsters Manual, which is one of the reasons why I use it as a reference, as a guide, and then I most often reskin the monsters. So I'll take ogre stats for a large orc chieftain who I'm who I want to be particularly strong or something like that. So I'll use the ogre stats there, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll just make them an orc. When it comes to demons and devils, when you read between the two, they're very similar. Yes, I understand that d uh, demons come from the abyss, devils come from um, the nine levels of hell, and that devils are lawful evil, and that demons are, are chaotic evil. But when you read how demons are formed, demons are basically the void, the abyss itself, manifesting entities on its behalf to go off and fight for it. That, I thought, was very interesting. Devils are souls that have been incarnated and given power and the opportunity to grow stronger. They go, grow stronger by basically the largesse of their leadership, effectively. But demons have this morphic property, which I particularly liked. A demon that does, does well can morph with more power from the abyss into a bigger demon. <clears throat> This, though, is not represented necessarily in the books, all of the books, because there's a certain amount of fluidity there that I think print doesn't necessarily allow for. So one of the things that I'm introducing here in the idea of um, 
making this a more dynamic space, and because we can, is that multiple demons, if they are being defeated, will be able to morph into a bigger demon. Because that, to me, is the only way that it makes sense. If the Abyss is just sending out legions and legions and legions of demons, constantly, what's the point? Why would it do that? If it can manifest demons, why would it not just manifest giant demons to take over Avernus? So my thinking is, is that they can only manifest little demons, the smallest demons that they are, Dretch and the like, and that those need to then get together to form bigger ones. But they only get together if they're in a state of panic because they're all naturally chaotic evil and anarchistic and, 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 and all those kinds of things. So the idea is that they're going to merge and morph and grow. That's, that's the thinking. So that should keep them on their toes. Because if you look behind me, there's this demon Ichor, which I think is very exciting. Um, you don't want to touch it. You do not want to touch it. Uh, you do want to coat your weapons in it, though. And so it's things like that. Unpacking the book, looking for juicy moments, and then trying to make it, I don't want to say better, but trying to make it fit is very important. So what are we going to be doing for episode one for this episode? We have this beautiful cathedral map, which you can see behind me. And I have to say, again, a massive thank you to Dungeon Fog, who are one of our sponsors. And the the work that they put in in terms of making these maps really, really beautiful. I, I can give them a sketch out or I say, well, do this or do that. And then they make the maps. For me now, I mean, there's there's beautiful detail in here. There's spider webs and there's cobwebs and there's all kinds of wonderful things. So the characters are going to arrive here, and I'm not going to tell you how they're going to arrive. I saw that there was a question. Um, Eremos says in the last season there were a lot of remarkable cliffhangers. Was this purely chance, or did you plan for them? Some of the cliffhangers I definitely planned for. Others occurred naturally. We weren't entirely sure where we were going to go with the seasons, with the shows. Um, Watsi had expressed interest in us, uh, us running a second season, but they hadn't indicated yet as to whether it should be Avernus or Ghosts of Saltmarsh. And to be honest with you, they gave us the option. They said, do you want to do continue with Ghosts of Saltmarsh or do you want to do Avernus? And the guys all said Avernus because it's fun and it's exciting and it's new. And... Um, some of those cliffhangers will will come in, I think. I've certainly tried to, to include some of them. Uh, we're going to resolve a few of them quite quickly in the opening uh, sequence, which I'm not, I'm not going to go through because it's, it's just a bit of fun. Um, but yes, it's it, 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 some were planned and some were story-based character, story-based stuff. Another, another question uh, that has come through is, uh, does this mean you're going to use demons like the blob? Yes. So the demons, in my opinion, if the guys encounter little demons, they can be very dismissive because the characters are all level six. They're very powerful. And we, I don't want them to be dismissive. And I don't want the the war-torn environment of Avernus to feel as if it's an easy ride. And it would feel like that because it's it's populated with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of demons. But those demons are going to be fairly weak because they're fighting against lots and lots and lots and lots of devils. So <clears throat> you can't have these level 15 demons wandering around fighting level 5 or 4 devils. There's a huge imbalance. So you would have lots of little demons fighting lots of little devils in terms of, of, of the way that this environment is set up. By having them be able to morph and change, it makes them more terrifying. But it also means that once they have morphed, they can't break apart again. So they need to commit to the idea of reforging themselves into this giant beast and losing their individuality, which is why there would be a pushback that they wouldn't necessarily do it straight away. Why they would want to keep it, because again, demons, chaotic evil, they each want to be strong enough to stand on their own, but it doesn't mean chaotic stupid. So they can reforge and reform and come together. At least that's my thinking. When we look at this map, the characters are going to arrive in Avernus in a spectacular way, and I have been able to pin various encounters. Now, something that I have done is I very, very specifically wanted there to be a hole in this church. 
And so when the guys were, were building the map for me, I said, okay, I need two gigantic gaps in the church. And so that's what they have done. It's actually a cathedral. But, uh, so they've given me two, two gaps. One is slightly smaller than the other one. This is how I am going to give the players a choice. And the choice is they can work with Zariel, in which case uh, Haruman, who is one of Zariel's greatest warriors, is going to become their go-to person and will become almost like a guide throughout the entire uh, season. Or they can work with a devil. And the devil is going to give them an option too. Again, it's one of the wonderful things that they have added in I'm just trying to see if it's listed here. I think it will be somewhere. Uh, is uh, these are all the story points? I saw it somewhere. I'll have to go and find it. But the these are all adventures that are within within. And part of what they've included in the Descent into Avernus material is de devil contracts, and the devils are always listening. So I like that idea. I need to make sure that the players don't abuse it. That's important. That really is important. So lots of things to look at from, from, from that perspective. Uh, the true Krishcha says, could the demons eat each other to grow? Yes, I think that could be dramatic and thematic. I like that idea. I think it's better than them just forming uh, a group together. So yes, let's do that. Absolutely. I like it. I'm absorbing it. I am demonizing it for my own. Uh, thank you. Um, you never abuse a devil deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's something that we're going to have to look at as those kind of consequences. So, uh, yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, it doesn't look like you've a grid set up on the map. This will stop the tokens from scaling. Did you check out the Druid extension I recommended? OK, so let's let's go through this one. I did not check out the Druid recommendation that you recommended because I'm a bad human being and forgot completely Two, I did not set up the grid. I forgot. I'm going to do that right now. Um, again, this is one of the things that I love about uh, Fantasy Crowns is you can just set up the grid and have it all work. So there we go. Right, we've got only three minutes left. We've only got three minutes left. So let's have a look. Um, it's a good question that Z10 asks. Just remember to put the word question in front of your questions, please. Uh, what kind of deals are these devils, devils able to offer? Um, uh, it's There's a power play. Uh, let's just see if it comes up. Um, contracts. No, I will have to. I will have to look for it. It might be under tables. Let's just check here. I am in descent into Avernus. What they've done is uh, contract forms. Here we go. So, uh, is this the right one? No. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. So, a couple of things which are super exciting. The way the contract is fulfilled, each devil has a different level of power that they can offer in terms of the contract. So little diva, little devils can only offer things of value to 500 gold, minor magical items, small little bits and pieces, all the way up to arch devils who can offer the, well, not the world, but life, immortality, all kinds of, of cool things. However, what they also included, and I thought this was particularly fun, is the contract is expressed in a way. The devil clips their fingers, claws, whatever the expression might be, and then it is expressed in a way. So they've got baby dolls. They've got the a, a wretch appears, and the, the contract is written on the wretch's flesh. Uh, infernal scrolls we all know about. Uh, Limmer, Kiss, Song of the Devil, written in stone. So there's all kinds of these really cool ways in which the contract is inscribed because the only way to break the contract of course is if the devil dies if the contract is destroyed or if the contract is fulfilled so that's important and the important thing i think as well to bear in mind is the contract must be honored on behalf of the devil i think without a doubt they are allowed to try and twist the contract but devils are lawful lawful evil so they have to follow their law so that's something that we've got to make very 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 clear from the get-go is this is where we're going to be so yes we are using fantasy grounds fantasy grounds is our base i am using a different skin on fantasy grounds i went with this gray one which reminds me i wanted to change it to campfire because that turns the screen this 
warm, hellish kind of orange. I quite like it. Anyway, um, yes, they did deals as a story template. That's awesome. It is. It really is. It really is. Um, okay, it's time for us to start the show. So that means enough talking from me. Let's go get the team involved. And I'm going to put my jacket on. We'll see you in hell. I've been waiting to say that all week. I really, really have. Right, here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to <laughs> Avengers. Hello. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. I sense shenanigans. Can oh. anyone hear Guy? Hey, can hear guy. I can't hear Guy. What do you mean you I can't? Oh, I know him. why you can't no. hear Guy. You're you muted. Hear for us. Yeah. There we go. Hey. Hey. Muted. I was muted for thems, but not for yous. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For yous, not for thems. Um, anyway. Right. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to my wonderful, wonderful bevy of players for being so willing to come back and join me here in hell. Uh, well, Avernus, anyway. I keep calling it hell, and I wish I didn't, because I like, I prefer the term Avernus. Although I have been said, and this is a quick poll I want to run before we jump into today's show. Um, how do you pronounce Avernus? Or is it Avernus? Or is it... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. People were, were questioning my pronunciation uh, the other day. Um, I've always said Avernus. But a lot of people have said, no, it's Avernus. Um, I'm not no, sure... It's Avernus. Avenus. They have a pronunciation guide in the in the book, don't they? They do. But is it based if it's based on Latin? Yes. And it's Italian at Latin. Yes. I'm going to geek geek out for you all now. Lovely. Uh, the the stress should be the penultimate syllable syllable, so it should be Avernus. I'm with Janet. Avernus. 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 I'm going to be the weird one and Avernus. say that you should roll Avernus. your R's and it should be Avernus. <laughs> Avernus. Avernus. We're all Italian now. Hey, it's Avernus. <laughs> We're going into Avernus. We will have a spaghetti in Avernus. Ciao. Yeah, yeah ciao, uh, ciao, bambino. All right, see, see, but, see. No, um, no. And I'm not sure what's happening. My Italian. Right, so um, <laughs> let's uh, get into this. Uh, we need to get our serious game faces on. Uh, as usual, uh, if you are watching, we don't take take uh, any live questions and that sort of thing during the show so if this is your first time catching our stream uh we try to to run for the full two hours and then after that we then jump on over to the twitch channel twitch.tv forward slash great gm where we do a now i'm going to say it incorrectly afterlife show <laughs> uh where the cast and i hang out with you guys for half an hour and we answer questions as to what went on in the session what the hell they were thinking um and why they did certain things so if you have those kinds of questions you can then ask those without a doubt so uh join us for that we've got a few things to get through as this is our first show Firstly, a word to our magnificent sponsors who make everything possible. Dungeons & Dragons for commissioning this show in the very first place. We absolutely adore you. We thank you for giving your trust to us, this crazy cast, uh, to run a second session, second season. So thank you for that, Dungeons & Dragons, and uh, for making all the material available to us. We then have the wonderful World Anvil, worldanvil.com. You can find all of these crazy characters listed in worldanvil.com you can find the world right up in there we have now got a full-time curator who will be uh, just adding as much information as they possibly can extract out of me and everybody <laughs> in terms of uh, building up that space so if you ever wanted to play in our version of Avenus, uh, head on over to world anvil and you can check all of that out and have conversations with the characters in character using their new hero system which is wonderful we then have the uh, ever beautiful Dungeon Fog, dungeonfog.com. They are providing us with all of the maps. They have actually just recently 
uh, added an Avernus map pack um, or a Hellish landscape map pack, let's put it that way, specifically for the show. And uh, that's accessible to their uh, subscribers. So have a look at their stuff there if you want to make maps. That's where all of our maps will be coming from. Then we have Fantasy Grounds. You have seen already, if you watch the pre-show, Fantasy Grounds in action, doing all of our dice rolls, keeping all of our notes uh, in terms of uh, adventures and that kind of stuff, and providing all of the monsters that may or may not be dying in today's episode. Uh, just bear in mind, no NPCs were hurt in the making of this uh, episode. Right. Yes. And um, then I have to give a shout-out uh, to Leatherlair, who... Uh, Provided me with this rather diabolic uh, swag, I have to say. I, 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 I was, uh, I, I, I absolutely adore it, and I haven't been wearing it around the house uh, all week. So. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Let's do a very quick rundown of these new and interesting characters. Uh, if you didn't watch the pre-show interviews, uh, let's have a look. So let's start the first one that's on my screen here, and that is Xtech. Tech. Talk yes. to us. What do we see? Who do we see? Give us a little bit, very brief rundown of who Ixtech yes. is. Uh, as you can see, Ixtech is a half-elven warlock, uh, very fancily dressed, uh, uh, high-elven clothing, which is where they're coming from. Um, they, they're very sort of um, sharp-eyed sharp and aware, sort of seem very confident and and speak and act like they they definitely know what they're doing um uh, but there is this this some a deep darkness in those a sort of prematurely aged eyes of theirs uh of a lot of terrifying secrets possibly connected to this large very old looking book that they carry around which is bound in some sort of leather we're not going to go into what there we are there we are next up we have Mademoiselle La Rouge. <laughs> Mademoiselle La Rouge, huh? So, um, Mademoiselle La Rouge, as you have probably noticed from her very extravagant head situation, is a tiefling. Um, she grew up in uh, a cabal, which is one of the kind of uh, large families within the world of Braxia. And her particular cabal is, is usually referred to, and usually in whispered tones, as the family. Uh, she herself is a uh, rogue, she's young, she's doing great in the family, she's rising through the ranks, mainly because she does what she's told, um, doesn't trust anyone, and uh, sneaks off to take naps whenever she can. She thinks she has life figured out, everything is fine, as long as she does what she's told, which is largely um, sneaking around and killing people, because she is a rogue. Because she's a rogue, she kills people. Well, it's, it's your lot in life. Really. That's a hell of a motivation. <laughs> <laughs> she kills people because she's told to. There we go, there we go. And then we go to the man who couldn't decide on his character name, so he came up with multiple character names. Uh, Jormund, as played by Michael. Talk us about yes. Jormund, or is it Jormundfax Galeander? Uh, your Menifax Galondia, as oh, okay. his draconic like name is. Name. Yeah, all right. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, that's why. That's why I have changed it for the common tongue. Uh, and Yorman is indeed the uh, the the common tongue to say his name. Uh, I made a, a dragonborn paladin who uh, comes from a long line of dragonborn soldiers in a uh, distant kingdom. Uh, he, however, has since abandoned his post abandoned his calling and seeks uh, kind of an unbridled vengeance against those who have slighted against him and his clan. Um, he is kind of just on his own personal quest, trying to build up power and influence by finding strong and powerful allies to rally with him. Uh, despite his very large nature, he is actually very kind-hearted and very supportive of those whom uh, do not choose to obstruct him from his goals um, because he feels that violence is, you know, a weak man's tool. Right. Violence <laughs> is a weak man's tool. There we go. <laughs> Speaking of definitely not a weak man, Thorn. Oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. So I'm playing a dryad barbarian druid called Thorn, who's been burnt 
and has a bunch of little embers and flickering sort of fiery things under his very spiky burnt bark. Um, and yeah, it's going to be fun. Thorn's a lovely, lovely tree person. They just, they just like everyone, really. So, uh, yeah, that's who I'm playing. A lovely tree person that's already on fire. <laughs> so that should help. <laughs> We cooked. Yeah. yeah. Great. There are so many jokes I'm not even going to make. Right. <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time. No, no, no. One of the most interesting concoctions of an individual that I have met, because there are so many levels to this character, uh, both meta game and in game and out of game, I absolutely, absolutely love it, uh, is Nazaya. Or Nazia, Naz, I, I, you told me how to say this before. Nazia. Nazia. All right, there we go. Nazia, the wonderful Nazia Mazra. Let's see. Yeah. Hi, I'm 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 Myri uh, from German YouTube channel Orkenspalter TV, and I came up with Nazia in very few steps. One was um, maybe play a monk because it's going to annoy a guy. <laughs> <laughs> First, I wanted to be a tiefling, but then I and then I realized that half orcs are woefully underrepresented, and yeah, so it became Nazaya, the half orc monk, path of shadows. But she is a cousin of May or um, Mademoiselle La Rouge, so she does have a little bit of tiefling blood in her, and that's why she's got these tiny little goat horns. Yes, adorable little horns. And at first she was supposed to be a much more, a, a little older character, but then the character art came in and I think you all agree that it's absolutely lovely. And I wanted her exactly like that. So she became, became much younger and her backstory changed a bit to fit the artwork. And now she recently left the family where she grew up as part of their very special assassin and forces. That's where her monk heritage comes in so she grew up as the enforcer of the family so she is the weak man's tool she is just someone <laughs> point and she's going to be violent so she's a blunt instrument yeah basically Gotta love it got to love it absolutely and so there you have our ensemble of characters this um yes interesting mix of individuals if you're ready, I'm ready. But before that happens, we want you to be involved. So last time in season one, you were giving us NPC names. Those NPC names will be used in season two. Don't worry. <laughs> However, if you head on over to www.greatgamemaster.com, you will find a tab where you can now join the Blood War. You can choose your side, whether you represent demons or devils. Do you join the demon le uh, demon horde or the devil legions? The choice is yours, and you can then select which province of the Avernus map, drawn by our ever-talented Kaora. Thank you for that. Um, the map is there. You can have a look at it. You can choose which of the provinces you wish to invade as either a devil or as a demon. If you get enough um, support from others joining in and... Um, uh, you gain enough power within a certain region, you can take control of it. Now, what does that mean for the actual game itself? Aside from deciding which provinces are controlled by devils or demons, as our poor characters wander through Avernus, so they will encounter the forces that happen to control that territory. So you quite literally will be determining the fate of our heroes as they move around. Provinces that have no great value one way or another will remain fairly easy for the characters to move through, whereas, depending on their choices, some provinces may just become, well, worse than Avernus's <laughs> worst, or better, depending on which side you choose. And, of course, which side the characters choose, the players choose. So it is in your hands as to their fate. Have a look at that. And every week you get to vote to invade either the same province or a different one. And if you want write-ups for those provinces, also head on over to World Anvil. That will all be there. That is all there, I should say, and uh, available for you to get hold of. Okay, and now, after that, we start our journey into Avernus. It is a dull, wet sky 
sky that hangs over the city, and there is a single voice that intones loudly across the square. In the distance, the sound of the shore weeping quietly against the beach can be heard on this particularly dark day. The voice says, Marriage. The unholy union between two individuals forced into... And then it stops. There is a brief whispering into the air of said individual who then rejoins his conversation going, Execution! That holy activity of ridding the world of scum. <laughs> we are brought here today to face and observe the execution of the five thieves of Salt Marsh. <laughs> we move over the heads of Captain Salt and Jagged Jaw, past the diminutive form of um, Flick desperately trying to see what's going on. There is uh, Indigo standing next to Lahuna, who is not the one who's getting married, <laughs> or executed for that matter. Over the heads of a crowd of people who are gathered, all angry, and up onto a platform, a scaffolding that has five nooses. The nooses are around the necks of a half-orc of some kind, a dragonborn, a tiefling, some weird tree thing, and a half-elf. Standing next to them is the demented clergy who has just been emergency shipped in from Kanar, uh, owning to the fact and uh, the absolute truth, as far as everyone is concerned, of the recent murder of the priest of the local church. And uh, he continues. Fornication, desecration... Convolution, obstruction of justice, desecration, more fornication. Uh, uh, he continues to work his way through the list. After a while, Admiral Tarquin walks up onto the scaffolding, pulling his jacket down as he does. Yes, uh, thank you, enough of that. Right, um, let's get on with this, shall we? I think something that's important for everybody to realise here in Saltmarsh is that as we continue to improve the city's defences. Uh, you are all uh, aware, of course, of the construction happening over the uh, hill, he says, pointing to the hill that overlooks Saltmarsh, on um, the new castle that's being built here. The king has taken a particular interest in the defences and the operational capacity of Saltmarsh. To that effect, the nooses that we will be using in the execution of these five repulsive individuals contain a specific thread. This thread has been given to us by several of the churches and has the wonderful property of ensuring that the souls of the individuals that are executed are trapped within the threads for all eternity. This means that there is no chance that they will be resurrected or brought back from the dead by any of their nefarious compatriots. He turns and looks what? at you. This really is your final moment. Now, if we can proceed, he says, looking at the priest who's busy going through his notes trying to figure out where to skip to. I've still got five fornications to go. Should I skip that part? Yes. All right. In the name of all the gods that we worship and hold true and dear, we commit these souls to an eternity of oblivion. So say we all, on behalf of the Council of Salt Marsh, let it be done. And everyone looks over. There is a large hulking figure standing next to the drop lever that will drop the floor away from underneath the five of you, causing you to hang. And uh, he waves demurely at pretty much a crew. And uh, everyone, everyone knows it's a lad underneath the hood because the hood's on backwards. Um, so he sort of stands oh, no. there. Right. In the name of his majesty, you are condemned to death, says the admiral. And he nods, realizes what a lad has done. You can pull the lever, a lad. Huh? Right, you are, sir, 
Sorry, he says as he is about to pull the lever. The entire world suddenly washes white and everyone pauses for a moment, except for you five, who are standing hands bound, rope around neck, uh, feet firmly on the wooden boards which are about to give out from you. Standing on the platform in front of you is this particularly large, well-muscled, very beautiful man with these expansive white wings stretched out on either side, sprouting from his back, and this radiant light washing over him. He has dark skin and brilliant white teeth, and these eyes, which are so, so blue, they are mesmerizing. I have come here to give you a choice. You are all about to die, and if it was up to me, that is exactly what should happen. However, there is an alternative. I need your help. If you agree to join our cause and find the honor which you have lost, then your lives will be spared. If you do not, I will leave and you are left to your fate. I agree. I have not yet set out the terms. It don't matter. Yeah. We die or we join you, right? Yes. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I agree too. Yep. But I have not yet set out the terms. You would not know what you are agreeing to. Why do we not let the, uh, the pretty man speak a little bit more, huh? Well, we're on his time, so... Fine. Apparently Just... time is of no consequence. Speak your terms, winged man. We, the view is good, huh? Go on. I, uh... Ah. Me. There is an individual who requires the five of you and your talent. If you will journey with me into the first layer of the Nine Hells and perform some duties there, you might expunge the darkness from your souls and reclaim your place amongst the living here in the prime material plane. It uh, will did not you say easy. hell? Yes, you, the territory is known as yeah. Avernus. Okay, I'm really on board with this. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm fully what? on board. Mm -hmm. Yep. Down to hell, right? Uh, and you can cleanse our souls. What? Y you can cleanse our souls. Y you said that. No. Only you... <sighs> Why did she send me? He says, pacing backwards and forwards. He's wearing heavy plate mail, so there's a loud clanking sound. Um... I, I, I don't know why she sent you, because I don't know who her is. Um, I think we all agree. May? May, right. Grant, May. Sorry? Um, we, I was uh, totally paying attention. Um, is there anything else you can tell us? Uh... You're going to be required to perform certain tasks that, again, you are more capable of performing than the rest of us, as much as I don't like saying that, but it is true. As a result, perform these tasks, and if there is any shred of goodness in you, you might be able to express that and reclaim your dark and tainted souls so if we do finish these tasks where exactly will that end us up will you just leave us somewhere in the world once our captain has deemed your actions to have warranted your freedom she will return you to the prime material wherever you wish it is of little importance to us is is that here if you so choose to return to this place you are welcome to no, what does prime materia mean? 
It's this ah. world. This yes. one. Yeah, it means this one. Jorman you, leans Jorman. forward a little bit, straining against the noose around his neck. And what guarantee do we have that you will keep true to your word? His light gets brighter and there is a warmth that washes over you. It's not terrible. It's it's more comforting, like the hug of one's mother after many years of, of absenteeism. There is a, a comfort that comes in there. And he says, I am an angel of the highest orders. You yeah, have yeah. my word that yes, is. what is offered is what will be given, provided that you can follow your own, which I doubt, since you are without honor. But perhaps you might, in which case, if you honor your side of this exchange, we will honor ours. It is not in our nature to deceive or to lie or to betray, unlike yourselves. And what about our crimes here? Will they be forgotten about? Your crimes are your own to own. We will return you to the prime material plane. If you so choose to be returned a thousand miles from this place, so be it. We will not interfere with the affairs of mortal man. D'accord. Encore une fois, one more time. We go with you to L. Just, just the little L, not the big L. Just the little L, and Above. you will be there. Sometimes not wearing all of that uh, metal, and uh, we help you with a little thing, and then we come back here. We do not die, and uh, c'est bien. That's it, right? Yes, that is it. There will be no fornication in hell. I do not believe in fornication. Oh, I. I, I... I've seen it. I know it exists, huh? Be that as it may, is your choice to join me and expunge yes. your souls? Yes. Yeah. I want all of you to give me a perception check, if you please. Perception. Ooh. Some Ooh. good numbers Ooh. coming through. So, oh, Ooh. we have it. There's our first natural 20. In the fire it goes. In the fire as it burns. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed. All right. So those of you that uh, got above 15, which if I look across here was Ixtec, <laughs> Thorn, and uh, Jormund. I don't think anybody else got there. The three of you... Notice that there's a hand waving in the crowd. <clears throat> it's unusual because the rest of the crowd are all frozen in time. But there is a little hand waving, just waving idly in the background. It's um, <laughs> another very handsome young man. But he's dressed in a fine livery, very well appointed, quite a lot of jewels. His hair is slick back. Um, he's quite, quite red in color and has two very delicate tiefling like horns out the sides of his head. He could very well be a tiefling, but he's the only one moving. He's not saying anything. He's just quietly waving. Um, yeah, uh, there's, uh, somebody moving behind you. As the big man turns to look, you watch as that individual vanishes completely. Uh, ah, this is the deception that you are so good at. Yes, I shall did, be more wary. Did you just play made you look with an angel? <laughs> no, I mean... It will not yeah. happen again. Wow. Oh. As he turns back to address you, that same figure reappears, this time leaning on the edge of the uh, platform of the scaffolding of everything, and just looking up at the lot of you, smiling. I return do, we, do we all see him this time? Everybody now sees him, yeah. I give him a smile back. Are we to depart? Is the tiefling hot? Oh, yes. Is he hotter than the angel? Kind of like, 
good boy versus bad boy. But So he's hotter. <laughs> I don't know what floats your boat. So, yeah, your choice. D'accord. Okay. Uh, Mademoiselle Le Rouge looks the angel up and down. And there's a distinct um, feeling that if she could, the buckles would be coming off the armor. Um, and she says, D'accord. I will go with you. Let's see what happens. Huh? Right. This may hurt. May, huh? Of course it does. He then sort of smiles. The face that's leaning on the scaffolding and then disappears. The world for a moment washes white and then suddenly you get the sense that your feet are dropping away below you at an incredible speed and there's that moment of panic where you think perhaps a lad has finally pulled the lever. Uh... But in actual fact, your feet are just disappearing into this dark hole underneath you. And your feet have gone, then your shins have gone, then your knees have gone. Yeah. There is this low screaming sound which starts to become louder and louder. It sounds as if there are thousands of people crying out in pain and anguish. And then this whole darkness consumes you completely. For the briefest of moments, your life and your actions starts to flash past you. Suddenly you're standing in the church over Salt Marsh. There is the dead priest. There are the ghosts. There are the, the, the undead tree. Then you're back further. You're on the road. You're on a journey. You split your different ways as your life just flashes past you in this assault of history and bad choices and good choices and actions and regrets perhaps until there is a very definite thump and you land with a, a rather unceremonious I should say thud I need you <laughs> aha <laughs> the monk tries to stabilize um, before before landing um. I'm going to share a map with you. You you land on this really cold, hard surface. And for a moment, you think perhaps you, you're back in that church because there's that, that similar musty smell. And then suddenly it gets hot, very hot. The temperature just rises and rises until it gets to that dry heat, that insufferable dryness that 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 just makes you want to drink water and the light starts to come in a bit it starts to get red it starts to get murky it starts to get dark it starts to get actually the shadows are everywhere and they seem to move around on their own accord trying Ooh, to get away from you it looks like That's your good. own shadows are trying to claw away from you very briefly on the floor as you as you start to stand and look around. You are very much alone in this space. And it, as expansive as it is, you realize you are standing in a significantly large cathedral. There's a problem, though. The windows that uh, look out of the central area that you are in they seem to be blood red in color and don't let in a huge amount of light. There is a large chandelier hanging overhead which does burn and you realize that the screaming is because it is people standing there. They look like priests, as a matter of fact, of various faiths are standing bound or impaled upon the chandelier and they are on fire. That is what is illuminating this space. Writhing, screaming, clutching at the burning flesh, trying to remove it, but without any success. Oh. It's at that point that there is this brief blurring of white energy, and once again, the large individual stands in front of you. Good. Hello. You have survived. It would have been unfortunate if you got lost along the way. That was sarcasm. Now, 
I am Harriman, and I serve the great general Zariel. He looks around. She should be here by now. Why, Why is she not here? Burning? Why yes, are the people burning? Because, unlike the five of you, they deserve the fate they have currently received. All of them were deceivers, betrayers, users of their station. They were not about spreading the word of their gods. They were merely a gluttons for whatever rewards they could gather on the prime material plane. I'm sure you would fit in with them quite well. But you are not yet facing your punishment. You should know... You are not technically dead. You are still alive. If you die here, your soul will return here and you will suffer whatever fate is determined for you. So do not die. Decker? If you survive until Zariel deems it worthy of you to return to the Prime Material and you are still alive, you will then be returned intact, of course. If you die here, you die here and your soul will receive the punishment it justly deserves. He seems very so, unsettled that um, it, it, he's definitely worried that there should be others here by the looks of things. He keeps looking around. So you'll be watching us then, keeping track of what we do? It is not for me to decide that. You will be given tasks that you will be required to perform. Your soul and cleansing your soul is specifically in the hands of yourself and your gods. Perform acts that would be of value to them and they will clean your soul. Uh, we provide I... you an opportunity to do so. That is merely the terms of our deal. How and gracious of you. Follow a god. What did you say? And those who do not follow a god? He looks up at the ceiling. I think you will find Avernus incredibly illuminating. <laughs> Which I have? Oh, but no, it's not that I don't believe there are gods. I just. I think he's saying pick one. That is not I don't how think it should any work. one of them wants me. <laughs> but that's how it's working. You should be working, drawn right? to your god. You should not pick one as if it was a bakery and you were choosing what to have with your villainous breakfast before you go and commit some atrocity, or whatever it is that you people do. You should be compelled to follow one of the gods. They have power and are, in most cases, worthy of your respect. Yes, yes. So, how will you be giving us our, um, tasks? Uh, she should be here by now. Sorry, Al. Yes, along with several others. You uh, will stay here. This... Do not die. He disappears in a flash of white light. Oh, the pretty man is gone. Why did you do that? You chased him away, huh? Yes, probably I for didn't... the best. Uh, I'll take this moment to go to uh, Mai and uh, using my teeth, given my hands are still, you know, kind of bound, I right. will bite through the uh, restraints. So, yes, you start biting through May's uh, ropes on her hands, <laughs> starting to cut her free. <laughs> Definitely. <It's... laughs> Don't complain. It's what, what I do. Whatever, huh? whatever fate seems to have brought us, we have all been brought here together, and if that angel is going to return, he's going to want us to be performing these tasks diligently. I suggest I that we work that. together for the time being. Of course. Does yep. that make sense, huh? Maybe we can get out of this with our skins intact? Looking back up, he is hoping. Maybe we can get them down there making an horrible noise. Once you're done chewing at my wrists, yes. I will pull out a knife. Yes. A little glint goes through my eyes for a second. <laughs> and then I, I start cutting people free. Thank you. You are Question. all released from your bonds. Yes. Question for the GM. How uh, are we have our clothes, yes. I assume, but do we have any of our other things? So 
the equipment that you were carrying mysteriously you do have it hmm it's very yes. friendly of him convenient mm. <laughs> I, I take out my massive tome and I, I unclasp the the metal lock and I, I sort of start leafing through it as if I'm looking for something sort of muttering to myself under my breath in well, a language that I don't yeah. think any of you uh, know what, what language is it? is it infernal yeah I do know that Oh my god! Just sort of mumbling, annoyed things about, you know, mm. what can I do? Ooh, I also speak Infernal. Mm. Of course, because you're a tiefling. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so almost everybody in the party actually understands what you're saying. Of course, um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, trying to I don't. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, no, I don't get it. They're just muttering to themselves about, like, um... Guy, can I roll a history check to find out if I know who Zariel is? Absolutely. Uh, history or religion. Anybody okay. can roll this as well, by the way, if you want some oh. more insight into, into that name. I'd love to. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. Mm. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, Ooh. some high mm. numbers there. Let's hope they uh, yeah. hold. Yes, so um, Ixtec and uh, Jorman, the two of you know the most about Zariel. Zariel is somewhat of a rebel within the angelic host, it's simply because she's very proactive. So what you know about the battles and the conflagrations that happen between the light, the forces of the perceived heavens and the forces of the hells, it's very convoluted. And the reason why it's convoluted is because you have gods who've got some very diabolic intentions. So if you commit diabolic intentions in the name of that god, you're actually fulfilling what they want you to do, and so you end up in their version of heaven. However, even when serving diabolic gods, sometimes things slip up. You don't kick the puppy. You, you know, you avoid your monthly sacrifice. Yeah, you let it slip, those kinds of things. There's punishment. And that is where Avernus and the Nine Hells comes in. It's a collective cesspool that all of the gods agree is where they don't want anyone to go. And uh, so they send those that they don't like there, pretty much. Zariel is part of the host of uh, defenders of the realms of the gods, and she works with several other of the angelic host. But she's more, as I said, proactive. Definitely a little bit vindictive, very militant. She often appears on the prime material plane, trying to shift the balance when evil has started to, to corrupt things. She's been present. There are several texts that talk about the chastisement of uh, Zariel for being too involved in the affairs of the prime material plane. Anything beyond that, she's a competent warrior. She rose through the ranks um, with determination and skill. She's often looked up at by young women and men who are looking for a strong younger figure who is not afraid to take on authority. Um, but she does her duty and she is considered to be one of the up and coming stars who will one day perhaps ascend to full godhood and take her position amongst the pantheons perhaps as a champion for um teenagers and youngsters who have a drive to make things better possibly by using a sledgehammer <laughs> yes haraman his name rings a bell as well he is her second in command and uh, is almost invariably always seen riding with her uh, as she goes into to performing her duties around uh, the, 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 the heavens and things. So that's what, between the three of you, you cobble together uh, as, you, as you're sort of discussing this space. The church that you're in right now, you have concluded just from the adornment, from the architecture, is definitely um, either the 
cathedral or a cathedral from uh, a space on the map known as Ansir, which is an elvish controlled territory. The shape of it is is still stone, but there's a certain amount of organic layout to it. Why it would be here, you don't know. Oh, so this is like a, a twisted version of the cathedral kind in Ansir. Kind of. You can see to the right-hand side of the church that there's lots of that red light pouring in, and you realize that there may be sections of it that have crumbled away. But until you look out the windows, you won't know what's uh, what's truly going on. Nazia, you wanted to say something? No, Nazia just said oh. home because she's from Ansia, and so is May. Yes. This particular cathedral, you remember being in Ansia the last time you were there. It is a magnificently large edifice that the elves use predominantly as a, a center of religion. But yes. But also lords May, over I the city. May did one of the fornication counts here. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to tell everybody. May is actually going to uh, let a big yawn, oh, take a pack off, curl up the little ball, and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what May. She's going to keep one ear open because because there are people screaming and burning above her. But yeah, the hot guy's gone. It's nap time. Nazia settles down next to her with her her in a meditation pose and says, "She she does that." Jormund uh, sort of sees the two of them, then looks at uh, Thorn and Ixtec. Mm. Probably a good idea that we get some rest. There's no telling when that angel's going to return and have demands of us. I'm just going to take a quick look around and make sure that we're safe here. If you yes, wish to, um, you're welcome to come with. I'm going to see if I can figure out more exactly where we are. Mm. Ixtec's going to turn and go over to the windows. All right, Thorn. Uh, Thorne's looking at this weird golden thing. On the altar? Yeah, just sort of looking at it, just going... Okay, I will... Uh, yes, as you, as Thorne is looking at this, <sighs> this uh, object, you realize that it is a reliquary of some kind. It is this golden box that sits upon the altar. Inside the reliquary is, well... It looks it looks like a head on a spike that's Ooh. slightly green. You Ooh. touch the glass of the reliquary. It's got ornate gold roofing. Uh, there's little it, it looks like cherubs that have been carved into the 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 roofing of it. These gold columns beautifully fluted again with little cherubs floating around it down onto the golden base. Uh, and mm -hmm. then this very dead head inside of it. It looks like a woman. Um, the spike goes through the neck and comes out the top of the head. She probably was in her 80s when she died, though. Probably half elvish, or... It's difficult to tell with the decomposition. Okay. Um, well, she's dead. Um... <laughs> Uh, Jormund's going to make his way towards the front entrance of the cathedral, or what he believes would have been the main entrance. All right, you start the long walk. It is quite a long walk uh, towards the entrance of the cathedral. Extech, you're looking out the windows. Uh, you're going to the left or to the right? <clears throat> um, I think this this direction. All right, sure. So you're busy looking out of the windows. As you look out, you see this horrific horrific hellscape just black rock molten lava flows here or there this weird orange green fog is just everywhere and i use that term very specifically it looks like a fog but there is pollution in that fog there is this horrific uh muck floating out there every now and again there's bits of lightning the lightning is this brilliant orange that streaks down and way off in the distance you can see some strange tower like structures but it's difficult to tell and your eyes hurt after a moment because you realize that sometimes that tower seems very far away 
and sometimes it seems very close and then very far mm. and then sometimes in the middle ground as you refocus it seems to change distance all the time making it very difficult to get a specific mm. sense of of what's going on this is a question it's a moment where i should be asking as a warlock as someone with yes. a a devil patron yes um how much do i know about this place and how how well could i localize myself like not a huge amount the mm. devil has told the family a lot of information but a lot of it is potentially misleading mm. so when you look out yes this has been mentioned before and you do know that if you were to journey by foot that mortals in this realm get tired very quickly Mm. Where uh, and food and water is going to be a major problem. And if you are alive, as the angel Haruman has declared you are, that is going to be a major problem for you. There isn't a lot of water out there in Avenus, it's no. mostly lava, and that's not very good to drink. Um, only we had a druid. If only we had a druid. <laughs> well, about that. <laughs> well, uh, it just sort of uh, goes through their little their little backpack and sort of pulls out the small pack of, of travel rations and the small bottle of water and just sort of weigh them in their hands for a moment, sort of thinking. Right. Jormund. You are walking towards the front of this door. You hear a scrabbling, scratching sound. And it's coming from your left. Yes, your uh, left as you're heading towards the door. So let me go back to the map. Uh, yeah. I'll quickly draw the uh, my the start edge of my two blades. Absolutely. And as you as you are in preparation, these two very deranged looking creatures burst around the corner they're quite large they look like dogs that have been set on fire <laughs> and Puppy. bits of bone are exposed they just come bounding forward one of them has got five legs but the fifth leg has grown out of its back and is just sort of scrabbling blindly in the air it ends on a paw that has got three very large claws that seem to be dripping a fluid uh, from it. The other one does not have five legs. It has the four, but it has two heads or one, well, one neck and then a head that seems to have bifurcated up to the, the ridge of the eye sockets. So it's this weird, weird look, but they certainly seem rather unhappy with everything one of them is bounding towards you one of them is bounding towards the sleeping form of mademoiselle la rouge and we will jump into initiative very quickly let's get fantasy crowns to roll all initiatives the hellhounds are acting first and so uh that is hellhound number one it bounds forward its speed is enough that it can leap into the same space with Mademoiselle and oh, make dear. an attack almost yeah. instantly. As May! To, May! It tries to bite you. Oh, oh dear. Oh. May. <laughs> and rips into you. It hits. And as it does, flame and cinder burn around you. You take 13 points of damage. A lot of it is fire. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have hellish resistance and yes. also uncanny dodge. So I'm resistant to fire Love and it. I also only take half of the damage that I'm viable to take because I'm dodgy. Excellent. Excellent. Blue dodgy. So, very dodgy. You are a dodgy individual. Yes. So as <laughs> it bites me, I go ah! and sort of roll away and draw my rapier at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely. Love it. So you take half damage from fire, which is... No, fire. I take no... I'm, I'm resistant to fire. I'm resistant, yes. You tell me. So, yes, so yeah. it's half damage from fire. And yeah. uh, what was the other thing that you have? Your um... Starting at fifth level, when an attacker can see 
uh, yes. you can see hits you with an attack. You can use your reaction to halve the attack's damage against you. Lovely. Okay. So, in actual fact, you take seven points of damage. Still it, hurts, huh? It still, <laughs> it still hurts. Yes, it does. Let me find your character and correct that down to seven. Right. It, uh, as it's sort of ripping and mauling you, trying to breathe flame and fire, um, you, you, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, you um, see that it's, it's, it's fire in its mouth, burning around the sides of its teeth, seems to be building in intensity in its throat. The second one leaps at you, Jormund, to uh, mm. desperately try and uh, bite you. It um, hits that impressive armor class of yours. Do you have any immunities or resistances? Uh, uh, to electricity and immunity to diseases. Nope. That won't help you in this case as it desperately tries to set you on fire. Flames wreathing around its jaws. You're up next, Jormund. What are you doing? <sighs> this thing is just wrenching at you, pulling back. That little little fifth arm is sort of trying to claw at you, but it's 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 really just useless. It's dripping this white fluid all over the place as it uh, tries to claw at you. I'm going to sort of uh, look at the flames that sort of have you know sort of splattered over me. These uh, these these sort of tufts of fire. Yorman sort of angrily sort of glares at him with these golden eyes as these pulsating uh, channels of blue light begin to form under his armor. He says, I've heard you bark, little one. Now let me hear you roar. And I open my mouth and this burst of electricity just fires from uh, inside and uh, lightning just crackles and crashes into the, uh, the one in front of me. He has to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, yes, he does. Your voltage. From the voltage. And from half damage. He rolls a natural 20. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it can't talk, but is that bastard smiling as it's gripping your leg? <laughs> Might be. It takes half damage, I believe, on a successful uh, save. Yes, yes. Um, which... So just roll your if damage I and I will apply it. So okay. don't, don't worry about dropping it on to it. Yeah. Seven so, points of damage. And then halved. Or did you halve it already? Uh, that's before halved. So three. Three. Three damage. Three points of electrical damage as mm. you jolt this thing. The lightning plays across that fifth little foot, which suddenly spurts forth more of that sickly fluid, which you can now smell as definitely rotting something it's 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 <sighs> an organ seeping something you're not entirely sure what thorn what are you doing these dogs are on fire and they are glaring at, well one of them is busy trying to maul may and the other one is definitely um attacking jormund so i'm gonna reach out with one sort of spiky hand and cast a spell on hellhound one um and in infestation so a bunch of tiny little parasitic sort of like spores and little like things start to sprout all over the hellhound and it has to take a constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw of 13. Is that success for the hellhound? I'm not sure. What's your DC? <laughs> Um, that's Eight. a good question. It's Eight plus your proficiency bonus, which is three, and plus your spell bonus. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a fail, I think. All right. We'll take it yeah. as a failure. Otherwise, yes. you go to actions, you go to the spell itself, you click on the magnifying glass, it will tell you as well. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So it has failed. What happens to it is apart from these weird growths and things starting to burst from its charred flesh? <sighs> It takes uh, 2d6 poison damage. Ooh. 2d6 poison damage. It is not immune to poison, so roll your Yay. damage. It, just, it wasn't gross enough, now it's covered in mushrooms. Now, uh, separating mushrooms, yes, which are starting to boil under the heat of this thing's uh, skin. Yeah, now you you are the not helping, huh? Um, I cannot do the... Oh, I can do the thing. There we go. 
Yay! Nine points of damage to this hellhound as it starts to... Its flesh corrupts and breaks. All right. Monk! Me! Me! And then she wills her her monk weapon forward and tries to hit the creature in the neck as it starts obviously it's preparing to breathe fire or that's what what the poor little monk thinks and then she's trying to rip open his neck and going to attack the creature with mine yeah that's not going to work i got two attacks though because i'm level six yes so here goes yes. the second one. The second one That's definitely it. hits. The first one thuds against its dull flesh. You can feel that although it is on fire, it is not fiery hot. Your second hit definitely with more enthusiasm. Do your damage. And then I do damage. But more important than that, I'm going to spend one of my six key points and attempt a stunning strike to stun the hellhound. So the creature needs to make a constitution. DC um, is 30. Constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw of 13. It fails miserably Ooh. with Ooh. a natural one. We <laughs> 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 Then the creature is stunned until the end of my next turn. The creature is stunned until the end of your next turn. And uh, since I used my bonus action to ready my weapon, I yes. guess, um, that's it. All right. It is stunned. Uh, can you drop that condition onto the creature? Yes. Um, give me a second. I need to move sure. something around. Yep. Where am I? Big stack. Yes. Uh, Big stack uh, wheels around and stares in horror, and then a sort of glint of realization in their eyes of recognition, possibly, of these horrifying beasts. And uh, sort of raises up their hands and mutters an incantation and casts Eldritch Blast uh, at the number two dog. Number two dog. All right. Oh, gosh. Uh, hang on. The, the, the character sheet is in the way of the map. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That's, we've had a lot of those already. The bolt <laughs> sails wide, careening into some of this ancient architecture. It explodes, vaporizing bits of marble that were hand-carved yes. by the slave labor gnomes in the mines of Fairwood. Yes, yes, screw the gnomes. We're here right now. I'm going to cast a second bolt <laughs> at the same <laughs> dog. Spoken like someone who's going hey! to hell. You see, oh, this is... Yeah, spoken like someone who just definitely belongs here. Yes, it hits. <laughs> the blast hits indeed. Do your damage. Oh, and I dropped it. This is a, it's a damage. Uh, if, if we do shirts oh. again, I want Xtex to say, screw the gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your blast uh, clipping across the shoulders of the creature. Mademoiselle La Rouge, there is this dog, it's slavering. You can see Nazir is starting her round of attacks upon it. But yes, that fire is glowing hotter and redder in its throat. I hate this place already. I cannot even take a nap. <sighs> D'accord. You should I not take a nap. <laughs> yes, I, I feel like that up. one's on you. <laughs> yeah. We are all judging. <laughs> I'm getting that. <laughs> the tackle. Okay, I am going to stab this thing in the face hole um, with my rapier. Uh, That's a hit. Remember to roll the dice okay. and drop it on the creature. God. Now I am uh, sneaking yes, because I am within five feet of another. High places. Oh, so yes. I have done some stabbing. Yes, your Ooh. blade punctures through it. And there is that glorious moment where just for a moment it feels as if you have just punctured into a juicy roast chicken. Mm. There is that resistance from crispy skin and then that gentle, tender, soft feeling as the blade digs deep into uh, something truly delectable. As you pull it out, however, it spews out these rotting mushrooms and other tentacle, tendril-like things, courtesy of Thorn. 
The beast is still I... standing, however. Are you doing something else? Sorry? Yes, I would like to use my bonus action to disengage yes. and move away. Because it smells and it's bad and I don't like it. So I'm going over here. <laughs> Bye. All right. Yes, get behind me. Oui, oui, you are tall, I am small, this is fine. Yes! As you take up position there, you realize that that perhaps was an error. Oh no. The beast stands That's... there, blood pouring out of its side with bits of mushroom and tendril, and its flame just washes out. Sorry, did you have anything left to do, uh, May? No? No, I think I'm going to cook now. <laughs> yes. Is it stunned? Can I still do that? It is stunned. It can only take one action, though. Ah, uh, of course. With being stunned. I thought it was pointing that way. Yes. That's why I moved over here. <laughs> yes. It uh, doesn't take too much for it to, to look in your direction. It doesn't have to move. As it just blasts out this fire. I need a dexterity saving throw from my and from Nazia, please. Oh, no. As flame washes out of it. You get the distinct impression of burning mushrooms. <laughs> as this happens. I did not expect that. I thought it couldn't do anything when it's stunned. Oops. Unless I'm mistaken with the stunned uh, condition. I mean, the, the it's incapacitated. It can't slow. take actions or reactions. It can't I mean, take... slow is the one where they only can do one action. I apologize. Ignore me. The stunned creature is incapacitated. Ignore me. Ignore me. Ignore me. me. It does nothing. It does I nothing. Know, I hate to be the person who says, but in the book it says. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Um, all right. So it does nothing. It stands there leaking, bleeding. It wishes that it, in its head it was breathing fire, uh, being successful. Its Lucky companion, dreams. which is fighting uh, Der Jormund. Uh, Jormund, you need to give me a dexterity saving throw, if you please, as it looks up at you. There's the undertone of, you think your breath weapon was cute. Watch this. <laughs> so you do. Oh, you stand nice. there and look at it quietly. I'm watching it. <laughs> its mouth opens up and this torrent <laughs> of fire just washes oh. over you. And you take 15 <laughs> points of flame damage. Uh, Fantasy Ow. Grounds being very kind to you, um, rolling way under uh, the average. As this flame washes over you, however, it is your turn. You are free to act as you so choose. All right. Yorman sort of, uh, once again, like as the flames sort of wash over him, is sort of impressed that this creature has uh, been quite the formidable uh, opponent. Um. Uh, how does the Hellhound one? Uh, does it look particularly injured as well? Like, I mean, I know Hellhound two's a little injured, but um, how's the other one? Yes, it's it looks. It's difficult to tell. It's not moving. It's it's leaking. It's bleeding. It's looking miserable. Okay. Um, screw it. I'm gonna try this just because I can. Because uh, you can. All right. Because I can. We will fix cameras um, momentarily for those of you watching. Sorry, it just crashed. Yeah, I know. This is this is either. Good. Oh, is it? The it crashed. What happened? No, keep going. Ready? Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Uh, all right. I'm going to uh, basically raise my uh, my fist into the air, and uh, with the other hand uh, from my side, pull out what appears to be this this uh, iron and silver rod. And with one defining yell, I set, I yell out at the top of my lungs, SIT! And I use my rod of rulership. Uh, they need to make me a uh, wisdom saving throw, or become charmed into believing that I am their leader. A wisdom saving throw. Indeed. It gets 12. Uh, I don't think that's enough. I think it's 15 is the DC. It sits. And it's... Uh, oh, and it's... Uh, uh, kind oh, of and it's, sags uh, a little bit and continues to separate. Uh, it is uh, both of them. It affects both of them? What's your range? Uh, 30 foot. Or is that just out of 30 it's foot? just out of 30 feet. I've just counted. Uh, would I be able to move to, say, here to do it? Uh, you that could maybe... have... Oh, okay. no, that's fine. Fine, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take the one. All right. Uh, yep. It sits and looks up at you with big, flaming, slightly 
pus filled puppy dog eyes. <laughs> I'll sort of uh, scrub its head and that'll be the well. end of. Yep, I'll sort of scrub its mane and uh, I'll black look to and the other flesh one. Come away in your hand with bits of manky skin. <sighs> Next up is Thorn. Uh, okay, uh, hey, uh, Aztec. What? Um, I don't think these are too hard. Well, Dorman <laughs> seemed to have control of his, so just have all the other two. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna watch. Well, keep an eye out for other ones, please. Okay, sure, can do, yeah. They look right. cute though, right? They look nice. Sure. Mm. Sure. I just I pass. <laughs> <laughs> Nazia. I'm going to kick and stab and pummel that puppy until it doesn't move and no longer threatens my cousin. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I I have yeah. got advantage because it's poor done. thing is dumb. Yes indeed. So hit and damage. Um, oh. Hit. And yes. Wow. Damage. Yeah. And I spent another key point to do two more unarmed to, strikes you against You don't need to. Wait, as you I slam kick, into I kick it. the corpse. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I'm probably moving too fast to stop myself. So I kick the corpse once more and it slithers a bit, little bit away. And I... <sighs> Whoa. Slow down. Yeah. No, don't slow down. It's fine. Good. Keep doing that. <laughs> the corpse is oh, no. unmoving <laughs> and as you watch it all of you can see that it slowly starts to crumple in on itself as if its structure is just no longer able to sustain itself and it just starts turning into this blackened bloodied pool little mushrooms sprout out of it but immediately as they sprout they blacken wither and pull back into the sludge turning into this rather unfortunate black stain uh, which I will I will indicate here on the map for you as it Daya moves backward and Horribly. with her sheer size she just she keeps also moving me backwards away from the all right yes the dead creature Ixtec you doing anything uh, Jormund, have you got the thing under control? For now. Till I kill it? Mm, no, it's fine for the time being. Right, fine. I just start walking over, sort of, this this way. All right. How long does your control last for, Michael? Eight hours. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Name a spot. There yep. you go. Yeah. There you we go. I am gonna call, I, I call it Peppermint. You call, oh. you call Its it, name is now Peppermint. Its name is Peppermint. Okay, I am going to... Um, yes, uh, we're out of combat <laughs> as Peppermint looks up at you, vaguely drooling and on fire. And from the corner of the church, you uh, or the cathedral, you hear this... Oh, what's going on? Uh, my headphone keeps falling out of my ear. What's what's? <laughs> you hear this? Well done, all of you. I have to say, I'm impressed. And whilst I'm doing this introductory monologue for this NPC, who may or may not have significance to the story, you guys can reset your cameras, please. I am so impressed with all of you. This is the same red-skinned individual that you saw before standing in Saltmarsh. He's still dapper, still dressed to the nines as he was, and um, is now slowly starting to walk towards you. He does sprout this rather long tail, which uh, you can see slowly twitching behind him. Yes, Nazia. Nazia goes... <gasps> And throws her weapon at him. <laughs> Make your attack. More by instinct. There's another hellish thing coming for us. Yes. Startle the monk. Let me bring him up. 
I, 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 I guess it's not going to bother him very much, and I'm sorry, but... I look at my hellhound and say, we're going to have to buy you a bell. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Make your attack, if you please. Where, uh, where is he? When did he appear? He hasn't appeared yet. I'm not putting his token down. Okay, <laughs> no so one's I'm going to finish stabbing him. No, I, I'm I, just I, going to do blunt attack. Okay. Yes. Da, 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 and here we go. I will, oh, I will that do that for you. That should have yes. worked. There we go. Oh! Oh! oh no! 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 <laughs> yes. Wow. The blade goes wide as he ducks out of the way. Come, 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 come. We're all friends here. No need to throw weapons, surely. I mean, if we're going to throw weapons, I could certainly throw something back at you, but I'm not going to do that. Why? Because we're all friends here. Now, I know who you all are, and I'd like you to know who I am. May, what are you doing? I'm watching the tail to see what if he's saying anything that adds subtext or saying anything else with it. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, the tail subtext. Give me an insight check, please, because it's using a language that's a little bit older than than you uh, uh, remember. I'm familiar with with my tail count. Insight. Insight. There we are. I am stunned by his delightful red horniness. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> you do not know what he's saying. No, no idea. Let me introduce myself, as I think we we, we uh, are on speaking terms. Anyone else want to throw anything at me and miss? No, please go ahead. No? Right. I have the unfortunate oh, name of Damnifer. Now, yes, 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 I am a devil, and <laughs> you are in Avenus. It's to be expected. Uh, between you and me, I wouldn't trust any of the others. Nasty sort. Now, whilst you're all here on some fantastic crusade launched by whomever, or whatever you're doing here, I thought I'd introduce myself and provide you with an alternative that perhaps you hadn't considered. I've done some checking, and I have to say I'm impressed. Your activities on the Prime Material Plane have warranted some attention here, let me tell you. So I thought I'd be the first to welcome you to Avenus, and to offer you a deal. Interested? I am uh, curious. Huh? What's the deal? So, we, we already have a deal. No, you have an exchange. It's very important that you understand this. Those delightful individuals from up there, the ones that's all in white, you can usually tell them by their supreme arrogance and disdain for people like us. They make exchanges. So whatever they offered you, it was an exchange for something. I'm making a deal. And there's a difference. Subtle, perhaps, but a deal nonetheless. I will give you whatever it is that you desire in exchange for you doing a small service for me. If you don't do the service for me, you are still beholden to me for all eternity. If I don't give you what you desire, I'm beholden to you for all eternity. Do you see the difference? I invest in people that I like to work with. I don't just abandon them, drop them off and say, oh, you're on your own, high and mighty type of thing. So what you're suggesting is a contract? Yes, absolutely a contract. Hmm. And it's what is it you desire exactly? <laughs> what is it that I desire? I desire many things, he says, looking at Mademoiselle La Rouge. Some of them I will have repeatedly. Others, however, I will probably not get from you. What I desire of you is information. A little heads up on what your current employer is going to be doing down here. There are certain limitations that we have that we can't cross, let's say. And uh, you, would be, you would be free to do so, because you're still living 
which I might add is a very dangerous state to be in whilst down here unless you have the protection of a certain handsome devil. So what do you say? You tell me what your dear beloved Zariel is doing. In exchange, I will give you whatever it is that you desire. So if that's one way passage out of here, well, after you've told me what she's planning on doing, I'll make it my mission to get you out of here as fast as I can. Of course, perhaps you desire something else, he says, looking at you, mademoiselle. So, uh, I have a little question. Uh... You can ask me. She sort of zones out for a second, looking at him, and um, so um, what is what are these uh, limitations that you cannot do that uh, we can? Because you seem so uh, empowered, shall we say? Uh. <laughs> I am enchanted to say the least i understand why you did what you did and i can honestly say mademoiselle that you truly belong down here with us we could have so much fun however <clears throat> in all full disclosure which i like a lot of disclosing things showing things not hiding things nonetheless <clears throat> Your host, who has deceived you into coming down here to perform acts of holiness. <laughs> host. She prevents us from understanding what she's doing here. They don't often come down here, as a matter of fact, this being Avenus, our territory. So we can't hear her thoughts. That's a problem. Most of the time we can hear what you're thinking. Well, at least certainly the boss can. And he doesn't like when he can't. So if you were to seduce your way into getting information for us and telling me what's happening, like I said, I will give you whatever it is that you desire. And uh, what is it that we desire? <laughs> Only you can truly tell me that. So, what is it that you desire? I don't know. Maybe you have to read my thoughts. Huh? Come, come. We can all be in honest time. in front of each other here, can't we? I mean, after all, it doesn't get much worse than this. Well, I suppose he looks up at the uh, chandelier of screaming figures. It could. Uh, Mr. Mr. Devil. Damfire, please, we're on a first name basis here. Okay, okay. So, um, where are you in the, like, uh, the rankings? Good question. I mean, why don't we just go to another devil? Oh, I can see you like a man with power. You really do belong down here. Wow. Well... Let's just say, pin your colors to my mast, and you will see it rise, uh, so to speak. Promises, we promises. can move forward together and make sure that you are backing the right devil. That's well, no, I don't know about that. I think I want a second opinion. <laughs> Look at you. Full of I sap. Mean, uh, my friend here has a point. The thing is that if you still have room to rise, I doubt you have the ability to give us whatever we desire. Well, I don't know what I mean, power, you desire yet. You haven't told me. Power oh, down here oh. depends on, uh, you know, precision, doesn't it? Hey, I have one thing. Yes? Do you know a devil named Barzag? I could. There's lots of devils. Describe uh, something that I might remember. Well, he's big, black, like furry a little bit, uh, spiky, likes fire. 
can't really remember, but um, thorn. that was thorn. 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 That's like yeah. most of them. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was. It was. It was a bad night. Um, well, that's what I want. I want him. If that's what you desire, <laughs> I can make that happen. You talk about devils with power. Mm -hmm. Let me position it like this instead. If you were to go to say the arch devil bell who is in charge of this place he wouldn't want to help you because you could offer nothing to him that he needs however because i'm not yet arch devil i need and as a result it puts you in a position of power does it not so it is to your advantage that i am not all powerful just yet but when I become all-powerful, it is again to your advantage because, well, now you're friends with an all-powerful devil. So it really is a win-win whichever way you take it and will. But if all you want is some devil's head on a plate, I will make that happen for you, Thorn. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'd still like a second opinion. How about this? You give us some way to contact you, and then we'll think about it until we find this information. I mean... Yeah, I like that. Mm. I'm Actually, not going um, to enter into a contract you, without thought. Would you mind if we conferred for a moment? Oh, but of course. Yes. Chat amongst yourselves. And just to be clear, I would love to be able to leave you with something that allows you to get in touch with me any time you like. <sighs> okay. I'll just go and talk with an old friend, he says, and he starts walking past you, Naziah, to the uh, head in the uh, golden reliquy on top of the altar. Oh. They don't mind me. Nazaya slinks to the side until it's dark enough where she is and just poofs to where she threw her weapon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nazaya, no, I, oh, okay. Picks it um, up and then comes back. Rejoins. All right, you are gathered yep. again underneath the burning uh, chandelier. I'm just going to move you all on the map. Um, uh, Yorman looks at the others and says, Now, we've traveled <laughs> together for quite some time. And he can read our thoughts. No, you cannot, I, huh? I, thought I have you... no intention of hiding my nope. thoughts or my intentions. I speak plainly out loud as I do in my mind. My thoughts are only this. Your mind. Oui, Look, if he could read our thoughts and find out what he wanted from us, he wouldn't be making a deal. Précis. The oh. angel. This individual offers us a chance to return after we have earned our stripes. What this means could be anything. It could be an eternity before we earn enough privilege for these angels to deign it best for us to return. This could leave us trapped here. Precisely. Whereas this individual, at the very least, is offering us a guaranteed reward. I say we side with the devil. This way, at the very least, we have a guaranteed outcome and not the whim of some high, mighty, divine creature awaiting us to be handed scraps. But he said we could wash our souls clean. Well, there's no reason we can't do both, is there? From Where a theological decide... perspective, Xtech, yeah, if you work for the devil, <laughs> <laughs> soul cleansing is unlikely. No, I'm not talking about soul cleansing. I don't care. Oh. No, I'm talking about the, the, the job. Look, we'll continue working for this angel until he has time, has whatever it is he wants. I mean, if we want to fulfill this devil's contracts, we're going to need to keep working for him anyway. So um, why not keep let both ropes play out? Look, and what use is, is an angel going to be in a place like this? Exactly. They both want us to make this stupid choice. They both want us to know as little as possible do exactly what they want us to do. No? Like a hammer. Like like a, a stupid thing. But like, uh, you just strip me when you say stupid thing. <laughs> Pardon. You were um in my line of fire. Huh? But sure. uh look, we can learn. And if we can contact him and we can learn from the angel, well um Let's say we uh, we have the best of both worlds. 
we have the option. So well, we I learn think with the contract in place, the option might be that if we do not, f if we fail to deliver on his part of the deal, we are beholden to him. So why sign a contract that we do not know that we can uh, deliver on? If they tell us nothing, we know we cannot tell him anything, and then we are damned. And so that's take... honestly, she looks up. It sounds uncomfortable. So, so you wish to if... take this individual on good faith that we work no. for him. No. He no, I wish enter. to work for no one until we know exactly what is going on. He and won't then... enter into a deal without a contract. Prussi, there is no deal. There is only, he tells us how we can call him, and then we call him when we are ready. Nazaya can... nervously licks one of her tasks, and then I said, I don't want to be beholden to any devil. And no. that is why, says May, like running her hand up and down her back, we do not make the choice yet. We wait, huh? It's so much better sometimes. Besides, yes. there are other devils we could bring this information to. If this <laughs> comes, you know, sniffing at our feet as soon as we appear, then he's either yes. he's been yep. looking out for a situation like this or he's desperate. Getting is he first bidder? Is really the highest bidder? Mm, exactly. Pardon, Thorn? I said, uh, getting a second opinion. Yes. Mm, not a bad choice at all. So we're agreed. We make no deal now, but we keep a weather ear out for this individual should the need arise at any given point. Mm. Uh, Can... um... oh. Go ahead. No, no, by all means. I was just going to say, can we um, hear what he's chatting about with uh, the skull? As, as your conversation dies down, you look at what he's doing. He seems to be possibly making out with the skull. <laughs> and uh, his tw tail is, is twitching. And... Do you buy a drink first? Well, humans. Oh, wait. I hope he has mouthwash. <laughs> What are you doing once you finish your conflab? Because he seems not to be paying attention to you at all. Um, I'll clear my throat. <clears throat> there is a decidedly moist sound coming from that reliquy as he closes the glass lid, turns around. Right, sorry about that. Got distracted, old friends. Um, yeah, so you've decided, have you? Oh. Oh, look at those yes. spaces. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. We've decided that we are not going to enter any Rose. sort of binding contract at the moment. This being said, however, your statement about friends is not unheard. If you were to give us a means to contact you, then we would ensure that rather than working towards any particular contract or deal, we would be working towards our mutual friendship if you understand my meaning. He looks from the one to the other. I think I do understand, sadly, what you are driving at. And I accept I guess I don't have a choice, really. Friendship it is, then. We'll all be friends. <laughs> now, let's seal the deal with an orgy. No. No. No? Well, far be it for anyone to judge. As we say down here, it's too late. <laughs> I will be around. You can contact me using... Mm, he sort of rummages in one of his pockets. He pulls out this wet bag. It's dripping water, uh, vaguely sort of turquoisey in color. Here, when you're ready to contact me, this is an old friend. Just tell him that you're looking for Danfire, and um, I'll be right along, as they say. What are friends for? It's definitely whatever's in the bag is moving. I I'm a little concerned about the state like of that. your friends. Yeah. Even your friends are gross. Oh, he's not a friend. More of a... You just said friend. Well, 
Yes, he is a friend, I suppose. He's very dear to me. I would hate if anything were to happen to him. He's been through a traumatic experience recently. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to depart because... Is it me or is it getting bright in here? How awful. You get to see all the wrinkles. Bye! And he just bursts into flames. A few moments okay. later, there's this brilliant white light, and once again, the large Oop. form is standing there. <laughs> I'll pocket the, the friend. <laughs> yeah. There is a growling from Peppermint. Oh, um, Peppermint! Hide in one of the alcoves. <laughs> it slinks off towards one of the alcoves. Y you named it Peppermint? Yes, I had a horse like that once. Ugly thing. You had a horse like that? <laughs> yes, yes. It was a it was a dis destroyer with uh, half its face mangled after a cliff face accident. It's a sweet damn horse. A, a, a yep. destroyer? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. yeah, you are still here and alive. Me? Oui. Good. I have found Zariel. Prepare yourself. She arrives. Try not to speak your words. There is a, another brilliant flash of light, followed by five others. And this very impressive young woman standing in very white, uh, shining um, platinum white armor is standing there. She has short cropped hair, a very militant look about her, very intense look. <laughs> Behind her are five individuals, the likes of which all of you recognize. These are murderers, criminals, and other lowlives. You can tell generally by the blood-splattered <laughs> clothing they wear. There's one of them standing in very beautifully made, very gothic-looking black plate armor. Young man, quite pale to the, to the, to the look. Um, but yes, she is standing there. Several more flashes occur elsewhere, and soon there are about 50 of you all gathered. Each one, each group of five, has one of these um, angelic warriors almost as a, a guide or a minder, if you will. And Zariel nods to Harriman, who immediately says, All of you form a, a group over there. And he indicates to the back of the uh, cathedral. Everyone starts shuffling over. Everyone's sort of sizing up everybody else. This is Nazaria, like... shuff Nazaria shuffles along. I move closer to Nazaria and I put my arm protectively around her. Several um, of I'll the move... individuals recognize your act of ownership and give you a slight nod. Uh, I'll move uh, behind uh, Ixtec and just sort of make sure that no one's really eyeballing them at the moment. Ixtec is sort of clutching their book to their chest very tightly, and they, they look way more like a, a concerned student than anything else. It's like their demeanor has changed, and their face has it's become a lot softer and, and more worried. I'll sort of um, place a, a clawed hand onto, um, onto their shoulder just to, you know, sort of encourage them to straighten up a bit, you know, just... Right. Stiff, stiff, stiff upper lip. Thorn, how are you handling this collection of vagabonds? Uh, Thorn is probably going to be very, very slowly just nipping off small buds of leaves from his staff and eating them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as you slowly lumber towards uh, this uh, group. Zariel waits for everyone to get into position and then she uh, starts pacing. She looks <clears throat> not upset. She looks intent. Uh, right. I'm not very good at this sort of thing. So uh, let me start by saying thank you for all volunteering to come down here. It was not necessarily under the best of circumstances that some of you were requested to join us but it was necessary. I am Zariel, one of the Divine Chosen, and what I am about to do is in violation of the Holy Edicts of Heaven. 
you should know that before we proceed. That is why we have got together you individuals. For far too long, the forces of the devils and the demon hordes have fought a battle which some of you may or may not be aware of. The battle is called the Blood War and has been raging for millennia. It does not affect you directly but indirectly on the prime material plane. Acts that take place here have ramifications across all of the planes, but specifically yours, because both sides require individuals like yourselves in order to fuel their fury, if that makes sense. Our mandate has always been to observe and to ensure that this war does not spread into the upper planes. I believe this is the wrong approach and that those that are in power have had too reserved an approach to this conflict. I seek to change that, and with your help, I think we can. The balance that keeps this battle going is undoubtedly the leadership of both sides, the Devil Legions, the Archdevil Bell, and the demonic forces, the current leader of which I am unaware of. That is our first task, is to identify who our enemies are and then to work out how we can effectively remove them, thereby crippling both forces and hopefully allowing us to gain a foothold here and to change Avernus from being a place of evil to being a place of good. In doing this, I believe that your souls will be expunged of the darkness that currently inhabits them. And that is why I tru truly, truly believe that you will gain great value in performing the acts which we are going to ask you to do. Oh we are a small group of individuals. There are not a lot of us here because I believe direct confrontation is futile. Your expertise is what sets you apart from the average forces and certainly your abilities at deception, manipulation, betrayal and the like position you equally amongst our foes. They will not have advantage over you in terms of twisting things. You cannot break what is already broken. However, you can repair it, and that is what I think you will be able to do this day, and indeed over the course of the next few years, as we seek to bring about justice, goodness, and right the wrongs that exist here. Each of you has got a warrior assigned to you. They are my captains. Their word is as good as mine. Their orders are as mine. If you follow their instructions, <clears throat> I believe that we can all eventually find a place of honor and eternal salvation. If you do not, that is your choice, and you are free to make it as you so choose. But bear in mind, you have already journeyed to Avernus, and should you perish here, you are going to be consigned here for all eternity and will most likely become a devil or a demon yourself to be forced into eternal battle for an eternal war that can never be won. The choice has been made to come here. The choice is now to be made to follow upon the agreement that you made or not. Know that none of us, she says, looking at her captains, will judge you for choosing not to honour your contracts. We understand the types of people that you are, and we hope you can become the people that we would wish you to be, the ones that perhaps you are inside but have lost track of. Are there any questions, she says, Harriman folds his arms and glares at the five of you 
with a look that he thinks conveys you do not have any questions, but possibly is simply him judging all of you as you're going to betray us anyway. I can't wait to kill you. It's a difficult interpretation. Jormund. My question is that may we use any mean that we see fit to achieve our goals while on Avernus. She hangs her head a little and then she looks back. It is with a heavy heart that I am forced to acquiesce and say yes. We brought you here because of your unique skills and your dark perspective. If you can find a way to achieve our outcomes, I believe that the outcomes will result in a greater good. And as a result, they are sanctioned. But if you seek to corrupt pure souls, that is completely unacceptable. What you do in Avernus should affect Avernus only, if that makes sense. Yes, she says, looking oh, at you. I, I it... just wanted to ask whether there are pure souls in Avernus. I, I, I think you answered that. There are some that you might encounter. We have other agents in the field, but I will not go into that information. Any other questions? No more questions. No. The one in the black gothic armor raises his hand. Yes, I have a question. As you know, my nature requires me to feast upon those who uh, walk this plain. I pulled Naziah closer to me. Is that going to be a problem if I consume the souls of those that are here? He eats Again, Zariel hangs her head and she looks back at him. Provided that those souls have been condemned here by their gods already, they are forsaken. And as much as it pains me to say this, but yes, the souls of any creature that is down here that is not under our protection is forfeit. Again, those that we sacrifice here will be sacrificed in the name of a greater good. And that is the hope that we must cling to, is that our actions will bring about a better place for everyone. He's kind of hot. She looks around. He is not good for you. You stay away from evil. If there are no further questions, then your captains will give you your first orders. This will perhaps be a test for many of you in terms of your allegiance. If I can just give you one last word of advice. The devils that inhabit this plane will attempt to make deals with you. Those deals, you should understand, will always be to the devil's favour, never to your own. They might sound alluring, they might sound attractive, but just remember, whatever the devil is offering you, what they get in return from you is far greater. Do not be used by them. Rather, resist their temptations and prove that you are better than they are. Is the that demons, not what you are doing as well? We are giving you the opportunity to improve yourself with no requirement. You do not have to follow the orders of the captains. If you wish to wander the plains of Avernus doing good deeds and cleanse your soul, you may do so. It will be easier if you are doing it in the cause of goodness, of course. But if you choose to side with the demons, we will not judge you. It is perhaps in your nature to be weak. We will see. But, uh, encore une fois, one more question, if I may. Yes. When El is gone, when we have succeeded, when uh, we all eat chicken in heaven and it's, it is wonderful, what happens to all the bad people? They don't go to El. Avernus is but one layer of hell. There are many more layers to this infernal place. Our okay. primary goal is to stop the blood war. And we believe that this is the first plane where that can happen. In time, ultimately, 
We would like to get to a point where it has all been purged and souls are no longer punished in eternity for actions but are taught better, are given alternatives, are put to tasks so that they might right their wrongs rather than simply be punished for all eternity. It is an archaic way of thinking. There are many within the angelic hosts that agree with me. The captains here, for example. That is our ultimate goal. But I believe that the exchange that my captains have offered you is to provide services, to disrupt the blood war here in Avernus. And once that has been achieved, you will be returned to the prime material plane to a place of your choosing. So when we end the wars, it has gone on for years and years and years and years. How long does that take? It's about destabilizing the leadership. It's not about winning the war. So once we have determined the leadership and eradicated it, you will be returned. There is that... some hope, however, that if we do that quickly, you can return quickly. D'accord. Thank you. That was uh, all my questions. Your captains will have your first assignments. These will mostly be for the early stages of our plan, establishment. Avenus is a difficult environment to survive in. I am confident all of you can survive in Avenus. It will just take some adaption. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask the captains or myself. We are all open to suggestions, input and advice from all of you. You will, however, forgive us if we do not stray down the darker paths that your thoughts might lead you down. If you need counselling or advice on how to be better, we are also here. She steps back and the captains uh, look at each other, they look at her, there's a polite nod and then Harriman says, all right, uh, come with me, we will talk about your first assignment and then you can prove how you will fail. I thought you were going to teach us to be better. He looks at Zariel, who's engaged in dialogue with somebody else. He looks back. Zariel is my captain, and I will follow her beyond the shores of Avernus. I will follow her deep into the bowels of the infernal hells, if that is what she requires of me. It does not mean that I agree with her assessment. Now, oh. we will need a name for the five of you. We have names. Yes. Oh, but... um, in our first appeal, yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean. Yes. What are you to be called? Um, Degenerates? Well, oh. <laughs> That's probably already taken. He looks across. <laughs> mm. You are right. Definitely, he says, looking at one of the other groups. The, the, lo the last boys, girls and other. <laughs> the that last is order. inappropriately long. I think it's good, huh? Yeah, the one the, the lost, saying? perhaps. Oh, uh, I'm not so good with words. What about the forgotten? Not soon enough. The forgotten? I'm, yeah, what John said. Right. I, I prefer the lost, huh? I think Nazai is right. We are lost. Look at us. We don't want to be here. But uh, what is lost here. can be found. Yes. Yes. I've heard about when our something. enemies try to refer to us and they say, Who hey, attacked us? I want to say something. No, who attacked us? The lost. Where are they? We don't know. We lost them. Me. I like it. Xtech, you wanted to say something? I have a question. Okay. For you, Haruman. Uh. We were picked for this assignment, right? Yes. Because of our particular skills? Yes. To work as a team together. <laughs> that isn't is it... unlikely. But isn't if you it, were together uh... at the time. 
I'm just saying it's a little um, convenient, isn't it, that we were all on, we're all on the gallows together, so that you had a good, good reason for us to come with you, to offer us such a good deal as you did. The alternative was that you were going to die. Yes. And wasn't it very convenient for you that all five of us were so perfect for your little war down here? If you are implying that we had any hand in your actions which led you to commit the crimes and atrocities that your yes, nation was willing to execute you for, then you are gravely mistaken. Am I? Yes. It would have been a devil that would have coerced you to perform the acts which you have done. And since I do not see any devils here, then it must be that you are forsaken. I like that one. Forsaken? Forsaken. It has a nice ring to it. Yes. D'accord, you've named us. We are yours now. Have fun. You are not mine. I do not Oh, we are. Me. You gave us your, a, a name. That means, that means something. Yes, what? like peppermint. Like peppermint. <laughs> Words are important. You've named us. Congratulations. Yeah. That, that works. Yep. Fine. In which case, then, forsaken, your first task will be to acquire transportation. It is impossible to move around this infernal place without getting attacked constantly by demons or devils. As a and result, we will require your thievery skills to steal a device used here in Avernus by the locals known as a war machine. Do you think you can do that? What about food and water? Succor will be provided for you here at the cathedral for now. You should not be expected to take more than two days to get to the location we have identified as a potential source of these war machines. Stealing a war machine sounds fun. Like a plan. Can you tell us anything else about them? They're over there, he says as he points out of the uh, side of the cathedral. Oh. Are we going to work alone or are we going to work with other groups? The Forsaken will work I as a team. Over there? No, no, they have their own assignments. Fine. Well, let's not stand around all day. Yep. Uh, uh, I'll, yes. I'll uh, I'll let loose a, a whistle, and uh, summon Peppermint back over here. Peppermint comes <laughs> rushing over, looks up at you, flames coiling around the sides of his mouth. Oh, he is cute. Tail and Good fifth boy. arm wagging. <laughs> Well, I suppose the person that'll know the safest route is right here. Come on, show us the way. And I point towards the uh, the war machine location. On that note, we come to an end for this week. <laughs> Thanks for watching. A shout out to our sponsors, World Anvil. Check out characters there as well as the world setting on worldanvil.com. Dungeon Fog for providing us with amazing maps that we use in the sessions. Dungeonfog.com. And Fantasy Grounds for providing amazing platform from which we can roll all of our dice. As well as keep track of campaigns and all the other bits and pieces that go along with exploring Avenus. Join us on twitch.tv forward slash greatgm uh, shortly for um, after life uh, show where we talk about what happened in today's episode come and have a long uh, come and have a chat with everybody a lot of fun and um, until next time go and uh, choose a side to fight for as uh, the war is just beginning until next week <laughs> same time same channel bye Goodbye. everyone oh.